Hey Canucks fans, Thatcher Demko is in, and so is Tyler Mott. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Connect Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Connects Positivity Club, and this is my Connects take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Tuesday, October the 15th. It is game day, the Canucks host the Detroit Red Wings tonight. The Canucks are looking to build off, get their third straight win in their third straight home game. Of course, coming off that 3-2 shootout victory over the Flyers on Saturday night. And that was preceded by the 8-2 pummeling of the LA Kings in their memorable home opener last Wednesday. So the Canucks are 2-2 two two on the season, looking to end off their, their homestand with another win. The Detroit Red Wings come in at 3-2 on the season, 6 points in those 5 games. And kind of surprising, actually. A lot of people picked Detroit among LA and Ottawa as maybe the three worst teams in the league coming in this season. So a lot of time to get to that. But Detroit has started off well. And in Detroit, the one cool thing about the lineup is we will see the season debut of Alex Biega with the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, he was traded there, of course, just before the season started from the Vancouver Canucks. And nice video posted by the Canucks of him greeting all his former teammates, even though it's only been two weeks. So nice to see the respect and admiration they had for the Bulldogs. So Biega will start on the third pair for the Detroit Red Wings. Let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks. A um, couple of lineup changes, and big ones actually, not just uh, yeah, not just trivial ones. We start in goal, and of course, I talked about this yesterday with Jacob Markstrom on a personal leave for about a week or so. Thatcher Demko will get his first start, likely will start three of the next four. So Thatcher Demko gets the net with Zane McIntyre, recently called up from Utica, backing him up. Then on D, you have the same six starters. You have, of course, Edler, Myers, Hughes, Tana, Ben, and Stetcher. But now you have... Um, Ashton Sautner, he was just called up from Utica as well. Um, and that be, that's because Oscar Fantenberg is sick. He'll likely be placed on the IR. The, uh, Travis being teased or hinted about a roster move coming later today to get Tyler Mott onto that roster, which I'll get to in a second. So I expect it's uh, nothing, no one getting sent down, no trade, but it'll be Oscar Fantenberg going to the IR. But that's my guess, especially given that it was a defenseman that was called up from Utica. And that would be, again, um, Ashton Sautner. So Sautner will be in the press box as a healthy scratch as the, the top six go once again. And up front, um, uh, all three of the four lines have been changed. The top line stays the same, Pedersen and Besser Miller. But now we have Michael Furland going back up to the second line. So another chance to prove his worth. And he'll be playing with Bo Horvat and Tanner Pearson. I like the look at that line. And I, I, I think they actually they went away from it too quickly at the start of the season. So again, Furland gets to play with Horvat and Pearson. Then our third line now has Brandon Sutter moving back into the middle. And he'll be centering Josh Levo and Jake Vertanen. So Levo drops down from the second line to the third line. And Brandon Sutter takes Adam Gaudet's spot as the third line center, pushing Gaudet to the press box. I'll talk to you about that in a second. So that means you have, like I said, Sutter between Levo and Vertanen. Has the uh, potential to be an effective, hardworking, tough line to play against. A decent speed, decent shots on there on the wings, especially with Vertanen and Levo and Sutter has shown a good confidence, good poise in his first four games this season. And then your fourth line, you of course you have the, the steady eddies of Beagle and Schaller and Tyler Mott comes in that fourth line now and in essence uh, taking Jake Vertanen's spot, Vertanen moves up to the third line. So really Tyler Mott's taking Adam Gaudet's spot in the lineup. So Gaudet will join Louis Erickson likely as a as healthy scratches once again, once again for Louis. And then for Adam Gaudet, you know, um, some people may, may fret about this, say, oh, he, why take him out? The Canucks have been winning. But the Canucks didn't look good um, in the third period against Philadelphia. They kind of held on for dear life. I'm not saying it was Gaudet's fault. But if um, Travis Green, you know, there's a lot of time. Gaudet's still very young. And it's not like Brandon Sutter um, has not played well. Brandon Sutter has actually started the season very well. So, it's a, yeah, sure, it's a different look when Sutter's in the middle as opposed to Gaudet, for better or for worse. But that's the lineup that Green is going to go with. And uh, you can't really fault him for that, um, given that Sutter has played quite well to start the season. So, once again, Pedersen, Besser, and Miller. Horvat, Pearson, Furland. Sutter, Levo, Vertanen. Beagle, Schaller, Mott. Tyler Mott making his first start of the season after starting this, the season on the IR. And then that means your healthy scratches are Adam Gaudet, Louis Erickson up front, and then Oscar Fantenberg. Actually, I should say Ashton Sautner on the D with uh, Fantenberg likely moving to the IR. And that's the way the Canucks will line up. T Canucks fans, tell me what you think about the lineup. Are you fine with Mott getting in over someone like Gaudet? Are you fine with the fact that it's Gaudet sitting out and not someone like... Really, the only other two options would be Schaller or Vertanen. The setters play quite well. So are you fine with this lineup? What do you think? How do you think Furland's going to do on the second line? Do you think the Canucks want to wait, uh, wait for it too quickly at the start? So we can talk about everything. You can talk about Furland on the second line, Sutter and Vertanen on the third line with Levo, and then Mott joining the fourth line. You can talk about the benching of Gaudet. Benching is too strong of a word about the healthy scratch for Gaudet. The one thing I want to end off with, um, the Canucks have a chance to move to 3-2. and two. 
over 500 with a win tonight, which would be cool. The Canucks have played, they're tied with the two other teams, or, or I think there's one team that's played three games, but basically everyone's played five, six, or seven games. The Canucks are only one of a few teams that have played three or four games. So, um, and, and it's amazing though, with a win tonight, they move into wild card spot despite playing fewer games than almost everyone else in their conference, almost everyone else. So then I put a poll out on, on Twitter, and it was a really quick one this morning. I was surprised at how much traction I got. I basically said, you know, uh, this whole notion of small sample size, right? Start of the season, let's not get too uh, high with the highs, too low with the lows. But it's been four games. We've seen a bit of a, seen uh, enough from the Canucks players to start to make some, some judgments, not a whole lot, but at least start to form some opinions and judgments. And um, I basically said, how many games will it take for that small sample size to turn into this is who we really are. And basically I joked sarcastically that I, I want, I just want to be able to call the Canucks a good team. And I put a little winky face beside it. Now, everyone who knows me and knows my shtick as the founder of the GLCPC, you know that I'm very positive, very optimistic. And I, I think the Canucks are good right now, but um, the whole thing was, was that I will, will argue to my death that the Canucks are really good, even if they aren't. But you know, that's the shtick, that's the whole thing. But I guess some people on Twitter don't, don't know me, which is fine. Or, and they don't follow me, so they have no clue what my shtick is. So um, a few people called me out saying, oh, why, how can you call them a good team already? Why don't you let, uh, you know, they're on pace for only 82 points, or do you even watch the games? Like, a really, really funny comments, and none, none that offend me. Like, I like that kind of interaction, but I basically respond to all of them saying, no, 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 this is my thing. Uh, but I put uh, four options on that Twitter poll, and basically, so again, how many games until we can stop saying small sample size and this is who we really are. And I said, is it five or six games? Is it seven or eight games? Is it nine or 10 games? Or is it more than 10 games? And the ma vast majority, I had 500 votes on this thing in a few hours. Almost 80% of the people were saying it's gonna take more than 10 games. And a lot of people that wrote in said, it's gotta be 15 or 20 games or American Thanksgiving. And I, I get that, that makes sense. So uh, over 10 games got 80% of the vote. Another 17 or 18% um, chose nine or 10 games. And then only like a combined 3%, I think 1% chose five or six games, only 2% chose uh, seven or eight games. So 97, 96, 97% of people said it's gotta be nine games or more. And I get that. You know, I made a small observation that eight games in, not to split here, but eight games in is already 10% of the season, right? Eight out of 82 is already 10% of the season. So uh, I, I'm surprised a few more people didn't pick that, but I'm not surprised that the majority obviously picked uh, 10, uh, over 10 games, more than 10 games. And again, like I said, a lot of people are saying 15 games, 20 games, quarter of the season, American Thanksgiving, which will likely be somewhere in the 13, 14 game range, uh, maybe a bit more than that. So um, no surprises there, but um, I can't wait. I, I can't wait for the Canucks to play five games in the next eight nights, right? They, they go Detroit tonight, St. Louis Thursday, then New Jersey and the Rangers Saturday, Sunday, and then Detroit again in Detroit next Tuesday. So, you know, over eight days, including today, five games in eight days. That was obviously see the Canucks have played nine games now after the, those five are done. And we'll have a much better, you know, that, now we're in that nine game range. Now we're, we'll have a much better sense of where the team is. We want to see Pedersen and Horvat get on track. We want to see more Hughes magic. We want to make sure that Edler's strong start is indeed um, not a mirage. And we want to see how Demko is doing. So a lot of positive stories and JT Miller's hot start as well. A lot of positive stories about the Vancouver Canucks. So hopefully they can continue them tonight when they host the Red Wings. Okay, Canucks fans, let me know what you think. So I talked about basically three things today. I talked about um, uh, Thatcher Demko getting, getting a, his first start. And, and hopefully the Canucks can run with them for the next week. I talked about the, the changes to the lineup, especially the four lines. And then I talked about when can we stop saying small sample size. So leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your reaction on any of those things. I'd like to read React Reply as best I can. And let me know what you think. Also, let me know, uh, give me a, a score prediction for the game. After the game, I'll be at my Tuesday night bowling league, but I'll do my best to do a quick vlog after the game. Also, um, send out my haiku contest as always. So let me know what you think about anything that I talked about or how you're feeling about the Canucks chances tonight hosting the Detroit Red Wings. Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply. Like I said, subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy the day. God bless. Go Canucks go.